Hi everyone. This is another podcast style recording with no video. I had really hoped to have a laptop by now, but I promise I will by my next video, which will actually be a video. There is a right-wing internet subculture that I take an interest in that you could call the trad life or trad subculture. And it's a small subculture, a fledgling one, where people who believe in traditional gender roles and traditional lifestyles congregate. So these people are generally Christian. They believe in having large families, homeschooling. They will often have a garden or aspire to have a garden. And the woman's role is to manage the household and she does not work outside the home. And the man is the provider. This is like the ideal, basically every box checked version of someone who lives the trad life or desires to live the trad life. Trad individuals reject many facets of modernity They reject the public school system that teaches gender ideology and such. They reject the consumer mindset. And really, their worldview is formed around the family unit. Now, the reason this subculture interests me is because I share their concerns about how there seems to be less emphasis on the importance of family and how being a stay-at-home mom has acquired a negative connotation. When I am out and about and I tell people that my primary occupation is being a stay-at-home mom, I have found that a lot of people just don't know how to respond to that. But on the other hand, Christians generally have a very positive reaction to that when I tell them I'm a stay-at-home mom. So while I share some concerns with trad individuals, so to speak, I also diverge in many areas. The main one is I am not religious, I am an atheist, but I am also pro-family, and ideally, I want four children. But to date, I have never met someone with that same mentality as me, where they are an atheist, they're not a Christian, but they would like to have four or more children. If you talk to people in their 20s, you'll generally find that they think having more than two children is morally wrong for environmental reasons. But when I am engaging in a conversation with someone who says something like that, I point out, you know, if you live a minimalist lifestyle, you know, if you reuse things by second hand, eat limited amounts of meat, your family's environmental impact doesn't have to be exponentially high. And most reasonable leftists can get on board with that, although unfortunately there seems to be a shortage of reasonable leftists. I actually worked a very casual job over the summer where I was around a lot of leftists who, as far as I know, were not aware of my true identity. So I had a lot of insightful conversations where I collected a lot of intel on their mindset And just to be clear, I didn't do that summer job, um, which was a kind of basic labor job with an environmental nonprofit. Uh, I didn't do that summer job in order to talk to leftists. It just ended up being that way. As I mentioned just a few moments ago, I consider my primary occupation to be a stay-at-home mom. I am home with my son every day, and I really love it. And I say that without embellishment. I witness my son's day-to-day development, and I play the most active part in it. And for the record, I only have one child who is six months old. I chose to be a stay-at-home mom because I am just not interested in putting my child in daycare. And the main reason for that is I just find it hard to trust other people to take care of my son, but also that it doesn't make economic sense to put my child in daycare. Any earnings I would make at a full-time, outside-the-house job after accounting for the very high cost of daycare in Canadian cities would not be worth being away from my son all day. So what I mean is any leftover earnings would not be enough to justify being away from my son. I totally understand that once I have another child and and my son becomes a toddler, my outlook on being a stay-at-home mom and, and all this might completely change. But as of right now, I remain very uninterested in ever putting my child or children in daycare. I have found that many people who are in some way invested in the trad life subculture, they view the traditional gender roles of the family in a very stark light. They think the labor should be completely divided so the man works outside the home and the woman completes all household tasks. But this simply does not have to be so stark. In my household, I do most of the cleaning and household management, but my fiance actually does most of the cooking because he's better at it, frankly. Um, When I was living alone, I just made lentil stew for myself every day. And my dad is actually more interested in cooking than my mom is as well. So in my household, this is what life looks like on a daily basis. 
we wake up, I take care of our son all day, um, but we're pretty lucky because my fiance works from home so I can leave our son with him if I need to quickly take out the recycling or something. Then once our son goes to sleep in the evening at around seven, that's when I get my laptop out and get to work. I have a fellowship, so I mainly research and write. Then on Saturdays and Sundays, we take turns working and taking care of our son. I work outside the home sometimes on Saturdays or Sundays. As I mentioned, I worked for a nonprofit over the summer. And now because there's an election coming up this month, I'm doing some election-related contract work. A lot of people seem to default to the opinion that stay-at-home moms are lazy, but I think that is pretty much always false. And once my son starts school, um, because I'm not interested in homeschooling, I will work, you know, 9.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. on weekdays sometimes. That's the plan, at least. All this is to say, the idea that a housewife can never leave the home to pursue side work is kind of a fiction. If you and your partner are a team, you can do stuff on the side as well. And I actually want to write a more comprehensive article on this idea of, uh, quote, working stay-at-home moms, unquote. So if you are a woman who considers her primary occupation to be a stay-at-home mom, but she also works on the side, whether that's doing YouTubing, writing, running a daycare, babysitting other kids, doing part-time weekend work, or what have you, please fill out the poll that I will link to in the description because I'm gathering stories to write this article because no one, as far as I'm aware, is really talking about the working stay-at-home mother um, other than about moms who do multi-level marketing and such. In this video, I've talked about the path I took, so being a stay-at-home mom who works on the side. But I am someone who really values diversity in the sense that I value the diversity of life choices that people make. Some couples want to be child-free, and I totally respect that. Actually, a fun fact is that there is a child-free Reddit that started to be recommended to me after I was doing research for a video I did last year about peak fertility age. So throughout my pregnancy last year and earlier this year, I would keep up with the child-free Reddit just because I found it interesting um, in the sense that it was the path I did not take. And to be honest, because I agree with um, some of what they have to say, Sometimes people who have kids think having kids is the only way to achieve meaning in your life, and people who don't have kids live meaningless lives, but I think that is a very extreme position. And also, I think it's fine if daycare works for you and your family. I see a big push for subsidized childcare in Canada, so demands for $10 a day daycare and these kinds of initiatives. And I do think it is worth pointing out that this is pushed because... As a stay-at-home mom not generating a full-time income, you are not paying a lot of taxes. And I guess if you're a stay-at-home mom not generating any income, you probably don't pay taxes. But if you are a mom who goes back to work full-time and puts your child in daycare, which employs daycare workers, that creates many more taxpayers. And so for that reason, I regard the push for subsidized childcare and other such initiatives with suspicion. But I completely recognize that some families prefer daycare or some families don't have a choice. Another important consideration is the degree to which grandparents or other relatives help out. There are parents where the grandparents help out with everything and babysit all the time. And there are parents who don't get help from any relatives. So I will continue to listen to right-wing trad life conversations because I do think they offer a unique and alternative perspective on family life, but I wanted to add my voice to just kind of say that there is the ideal and there is what works in real life for those who don't want such rigid roles. And some people do want rigid gender roles, and that's fine. As I mentioned, I listen to those voices. Remember, if you are a stay-at-home mom or your wife is a stay-at-home mom who works on the side, please fill out the poll I have linked to in the description so I can gain more insight into your um, working stay-at-home mom lifestyle and eventually write an article about this. Thank you so much for listening, and I do promise my next video will actually be a video. Bye for now.